Orisa has finally been nerfed and she was keeping a lot of heroes down. And not just tanks, but combined with adventure nerf and a DPS passive buff, there's a lot of things shifting around. First, let's get into the changes, and I've gotta say they have definitely pushed Orisa out of the meta. Both Fortify and Javelin Spin were nerfed, so her insane defenses that made her so unkillable aren't so good anymore. First, Fortify's duration has been reduced by 1 second, from 4.5 to 3.5, and also has a 20% movement speed penalty, similar to how she used to have with her primary fire in Overwatch 1. Her Javelin Spin has also had 2 seconds added to the cooldown. It's now 9 seconds, which totally messes up her ability cycling that was so powerful. But she might not just be super dead, she does counter a lot of tanks after all, but it's definitely looking a lot more chill. So let's get into the new tank tier list for Season 10. If you're looking to improve on the top heroes or even just your favorite ones, use the link in the description to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of guides and courses that can help you get better, faster. Check it out and enjoy the video. First up is still Roadhog, but he's actually not in F tier anymore. He's been bumped up to D tier because he actually has a decent matchup into Orisa now. Baiting her abilities is actually possible, and Roadhog's damage is really decent against her. It's not going to be easy though. She still has a stun that she can use to cancel hook attempts on herself and allies, and her damage range hasn't gotten any less oppressive. But without as consistent of an ability cycle, she's way more manageable, and Roadhog is pretty good at punishing bad cooldown usage. Outside of the Orisa matchup, Roadhog still doesn't do too well into the DPS in the game. The heal reduction passive also just got buffed back to 20%, and that makes life harder for all tanks that don't have a way to shield or matrix damage, and it gets especially bad when you're a tank that relies on self-healing to survive. Roadhog is the biggest victim, so even though Orisa isn't breathing down your neck every time you lock Hog, it's not that much better overall. Moving up to C tier, if you were worried that the Orisa buffs weren't enough, rest assured that she's now the second worst tank. Dead serious. The cooldown increase on Javelin Spin is great considering it's only a 2 second duration ability that now has 2 extra seconds on the cooldown, but the fortified duration reduction is even better. The cooldown cycle is completely trolled. You used to be able to spin, fortify immediately after, and then only have 2.5 seconds until your next spin became available. For everyone trying to kill Orisa, that's a pretty small window to punish her for using all her defensive abilities. But now the time has increased all the way up to 5.5 seconds. And even with Orisa's massive armor, she's got a big head hitbox. She's finally killable, and shooting her during Fortify feels a lot better knowing that the duration is 1 second less. And on top of that, she's 20% slower. That means she can't push as aggressively with it. A hard pushing fortified Orisa running in with her team is pretty hard to deal with, but now she just gets left behind. And catching her in a bad position is even easier to collapse on. She may be reducing a ton of damage, but she's not going anywhere fast. On to B tier, Reinhardt has also jumped up a level thanks to the Orisa nerfs. He's also less affected by the DPS passive buff. He almost always has enough shield HP to stabilize long enough to shake it off, since you only need 2 seconds. He's also been getting some really good buffs this whole time, but they still haven't been enough to get past Orisa. But now that she's a lot easier to force out and even collapse on for the kill, Ryan is pretty decidedly better. He's overall not much better than the other tanks in the tier list, but he's always been strong enough to outplay the tanks better than him, and Ryan comps at their peak can be pretty powerful. But Overwatch 2 is still too fast paced for him. You'll likely still end up having to hold shield on the objective a lot of the time, and you can only shield in one direction of course. With the HP buffs and the DPS passive making damage heroes so strong they can easily hold two angles on you, leading to a slow loss unless your team forces a move, which Reinhardt isn't very good at doing. Next up is Wrecking Ball. He's got a good edge over Ryan and similar stacked comps with his slam and boop. And now that the DPS passive is back to full strength, there's a greater value in having a tank that doesn't need consistent healing. He feels pretty safe in B tier. It's not always easy to get a pile driver off, but it's a great setup for a pick when Sojourn and Cassidy have such strong burst damage at range. And when it comes to surviving, he still has really good mobility. You can always play for your life as Wrecking Ball. So the tough part about playing him is that it can be pretty hard to consistently engage. And not having a tank that can frontline at all is always pretty hard. But even though the adaptive shields upgrade isn't insanely powerful, it helps a lot to give your team a shield buff every once in a while. It's just one ability that supports your team defensively, but it can be really clutch. It's pretty much a guaranteed 75 HP burst heal even if no enemies are around. Not bad peel for a solo bolo tank like Wrecking Ball. Next up is Malga. He's as straightforward as always, and even though he had options to play into Orisa before, he's pretty much always going to win against her now. His range damage is great for forcing defensive abilities, and now that Orisa's got longer cooldowns and shorter durations, you can even run her down with all her abilities and still have a good chance of killing her outright. He's not better than B tier though, because even though he's an insane tank killer, without a tank to farm heals off of, he can be a really easy kill, and that DPS passive is always active on him. There's no way to avoid it, so Cardiac Overdrive is notably worse overall. It's still very strong, but you can't run in right away, and you need a hyper-aggressive comp that can follow through to make use of the lifesteal and damage reduction. Most of the other initiator tanks have a much better slow neutral when they have to, so even though you have decent range and spam, unless you keep getting massive value out of your overdrive pushes, you can be easily chipped down to death, making you useless and wasting your healer's resources. Almost at the top of B tier is Doomfist. Orisa being a lot weaker helps him out pretty massively, but he's still held back by a lot of stronger tanks. Some have more utility than him, and some of them just win the matchup outright. But having a ranged stun that can't be blocked is always helpful for dealing with tough counters. Doom is secretly a lot better at spamming with the projectile buffs from Season 9, so he's really good at playing skirmishy, never committing too hard but still dealing good damage. And when he does need to go hard, he can clutch with power punch or set up massive AoE damage with his slam. His block is still really easy to deal with though, 
Overloading with massive damage or just ignoring it both work, so ironically anything in between is what usually gives him value. As a hit and run tank who doesn't take too many resources, he's pretty good, and he also counters stacked teams that try to force a push together. But he himself remains one of the most counterable tanks, at least he's not very map dependent, so even though he can feel pretty impossible at times, it's up to the enemy team to counter you, otherwise you can run pretty free. Right at the top of B tier is Zarya, and although she's felt pretty overshadowed for most of Overwatch 2, she's a really decent tank now. She has a natural advantage into the DPS passive with her instant bubble cleanse and has just enough base damage to consistently be a threat. She still has plenty of struggles though. Reinhardt may be a lot lower on the tier list, but he's very good into Zarya. She can enable her DPS to farm his team, but it's really rough in the head-to-head, -head, and other shield tanks have a decent advantage too. But in order to really dominate Zarya, you need to push her decisively, and as long as Zarya keeps her distance and uses her bubbles effectively, it's not easy. Her damage is both higher and a lot more consistent after Season 9, and even though Graviton Surge isn't an instant win, it's hard to play into. Zarya sits in kind of a middle ground between a frontline tank and an enabler. She's good at dealing damage, but bad at taking it. She supports her team really well, but it relies on them to use that support. An instant shield has a lot of potential, but Zarya is not very good at holding onto her cooldowns. They're easily forced, but at the very least, it's not as bad as Arissa is now. It's time for A tier, and starting us off is Winston. He's not as affected by Arissa nerfs, but not having to run into spear and spin and insane early fight poke as often is definitely a good thing. Winston isn't very map dependent either. He has a lot of space to rotate around on flat maps and easy engages on the high ground heavy maps, and his secondary fire is still as pesky as ever. Ignoring armor has been one of the best upgrades to a tank ever, and Winston is definitely making use of it. But although he's objectively very strong, it's a lot easier to counter him than it is to play him. At peak performance where you deal consistent damage and block heals and stay alive and hit crazy primals, he's insanely good. But reaching that level at all, let alone all the time, is tough. And even at that peak, there are a lot of compositions that are just impossible to play into. And although you can keep poking with your 40 meter zap, not being able to commit to the bubble engage makes him a lot less useful. So you'll have to rely on your team to take advantage of the enemy composition that's now being built to fully counter Winston. And that's not always easy either. Cassidy and Brig are already decent heroes that have an easy time dealing with Winston, and countering them isn't as straightforward. But even so, top Winston play gives you some of the most control over the game any tank can have. Getting there is a challenge though. Second in A tier is D.Va. She doesn't fit into too many established metas or comps, but her matrix, armor, and mobility all make her worth playing. She's the most viable dive tank overall. Most of them have limited frontline abilities at most, but D.Va has both the damage and utility to keep up. Her mobility is harder to cancel, and her matrix can absorb most healing. It's really easy to stick around and just pressure aggressive moves. She's also not limited to defense. All that armor isn't just for holding space, but she can force some really fast moves without much risk. Even though self-destruct is one of the worst ultimates overall, it's quick to build with how much damage D.Va can do, and it's always available as a second life. When playing your limits right, it's super hard to both melt you all the way down and then keep chasing to kill you before getting back in your mech. Even though Matrix doesn't fix everything and she lacks a high impact engage, she's almost always ready to eat important cooldowns. It's pretty impressive how good she is without a high value ultimate or an unstoppable engage. And now at the top of A tier is Junker Queen. She's yet another Orisa victim that's finally been unleashed. And thanks to her small hitbox and decent spam, she's one of the best tanks, mostly because she plays like a DPS with two times as much HP. The DPS passive does affect her because she's a self-healing tank, but it's not the biggest deal. Her healing numbers are really low anyway, so it's not like she's losing out on 40 heals per second like Roadhog. She gets value from stacking them instead of a raw amount. Her knife has always been really strong, but her scattergun damage after Season 9 has also been great. She hasn't had much time to stick around the meta, but now that the tank metagame is more of a free-for-all that's based on counters, she can do a lot of work. Forcing an engage is always difficult against slows and stuns, but her abilities are even better for kiting and holding corners than they are for pushing. And now finally for S tier, with the two top frontline tanks back in business. First up is Sigma, dominating range and spamming hard. When it comes to enabling DPS like Cassidy and Sojourn, there's not much better than Sigma's shield and spam. He's actually a lot better with the shield speed change from the start of the season. Sigma can usually be outpaced, but his shield deploys so quickly that you can assist duels from far away with ease. The DPS passive can be a problem for other tanks, but Sigma is one of the hardest tanks to bully as a DPS. His burst is super high and his pre-fight poke has to be respected. And because his projectiles bounce at a more than 20 meters range, it's hard to avoid his poke. If you don't rush the engage, you can easily lose the spam war against him, giving him a lot of control over the enemy team. And for the final tank, the most consistent, is back to Ramatra. He's not as strong as Orisa just was, and the 20% heal reduction has made tanks overall a lot worse, but his abilities have great impact and staying power, and they flow together almost just as well as Orisa's did. Shield, then form, then shield again, and then it's just 2 seconds until another form. And again, he's not as oppressive as Orisa was, but when he needs to, Ram can dump all his abilities for an insanely powerful push shielding and punching, and the improved vortex that comes up a lot more often. And even though he doesn't have the cross map stun or consistent damage that Orisa has, he has decent damage in the dual DPS, and his grounding slow is equally effective at countering mobile heroes, like over aggressive dive tanks. The map variety in Overwatch is so great that even Orisa at her best wasn't OP on every map, but Romatra definitely takes her spot as the most consistent frontliner. He's only gotten better over time, and although he's got a slower projectile speed than her, it's comparable damage. Within 20 meters, he can really farm with his staff spam. That's it for the new Season 10 tank tier list now that Orisa's reign of terror is over. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.